Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In the last video, we had a quick introduction to tenants and we set up a basic Django application. In this video, we will add the tenants configurations and create our first tenant, a coffee shop. Mm. But before we get started, a quick shout out to my new supporter on Patreon. A high five to Ellen. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you Hamel and Dimitri for all the coffees. I really appreciate it. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. This is the basic Django application we built in the last video. Now let's create a coffee shop tenant of it. To work with tenants, we install the package Django-tenants. Pip install Django-tenants. Then we add this app to the installed apps. So I'm going to my core folder, settings.py, and add it in here. At the very top, it needs to be the first in the list. But with Django Tenants, we organize the installed apps slightly differently. The installed apps are divided between the shared apps, which every version of the application can access, and tenant apps, which are tenant specific and isolated to that tenant schema. So to set this up, I change this variable to shared apps. These are apps, for example, for our main application and not tenant specific. And then I define here the tenants app. All the apps I list in here have basically a tenant specific table in the database. And as I want my tenants to have different items and users in the database, I will copy most of the apps to this section as well. So I will copy over all the apps except the Django tenants app. This should only be listed in the shared apps because it is responsible for managing the database schemas and needs to be active at a global level. But there are still some apps we don't need tenant specific as they are global and don't create a table in the database. For example, Django HTMX or the Django cleanup app. So let's just remove those. But we keep the rest, as most of them are dealing with user authentication and we want that to be tenant specific. And now we still need to add the installed apps variable. But it will combine now shared and tenant specific apps into one list. So with this line we loop through the tenants apps and add only the ones which are still missing in the list, to avoid duplicates. Okay, next we add the middleware. The middleware is responsible for identifying the correct tenant. Again, here we add it on top of the list. And you can grab this line from the Django tenants documentation. So here on the installation page, you will find all the lines of code we need to add for a basic setup. So next we make the database compatible for multi-tenants, so each tenant has its own separate database schema. We are using a tenant-specific engine for this. The Django Tenants PostgreSQL backend. Then we define the database router, which routes the request to the correct schema. And finally, we specify the location for the tenant model and the tenant domain model. These are two tables in a database which store the tenant's information. We have not created them yet, so let's do that next. For this, I will create a new app specifically for managing the tenants. I will call this app a underscore tenant underscore manager and dot tenant will be the model class. The same goes for the tenant domain model. We have the same app. Dot domain. Okay, we can save now the settings file. And now let's create this tenant manager app and the two model classes. 
So with Python, manage the py start app a underscore tenant underscore manager. So this created now the tenant manager folder. And first, let's add this app to the shared apps list. Just below the Django tenants app. Okay, save this file. Next, we define the tables. So I'm going to my tenant manager folder here to models.py and add the tenant class. This class is inheriting from the tenant mixing class coming from the Django tenants package. From Django tenants.models import tenant mixing. Then we add here a name attribute. This is just a normal char field. And we can also add other attributes, for example, when it was created, or if it's a paid SaaS application, you could add here an attribute to store when the subscription ends. Okay, then let's create now the domain class. This is inheriting from the domain mixing. So let's import this domain mixing as well. And here we only have to add pass because all the rest Django will handle. Okay, save this file. Now with all this set up, we can make a migration now. So Python manage the py make migrations. This is creating now the tenant and domain table in the database. And we migrate with Python manage the py migrate. And as we can notice, our migration log looks a bit different now. It is telling us to which schema it migrated. And as we have not set up any tenants yet, the only available schema is the public one, which our main application is using. Okay, and now let's start up the server. With Python manage the py run server. I refresh the page. But as we can see, it is expecting to connect to a tenant. But as our main application is not set up to be a tenant, you could do that by the way, it gives me here an error. We can fix that by adding a configuration. So we go into the settings.py file. And we add here this line, show public if no tenant found and set this to true. So this is telling Django to use the public schema if no tenant is found. Okay, save this file. And if we refresh now, we are connected to the main application using the public schema. Okay, with that we have set up everything now we needed to add tenants. And it's time now to create our first tenant. And the command to create a tenant is python manage to py create underscore tenant. Then first we add the schema name. And because my tenant will be a coffee shop, I call the schema coffee shop. The schema name should be one word and lowercase. Then we have the name of the tenant. Here we can use spaces and uppercase to make it more readable. And then it automatically created now the coffee shop schema with all the tables for this tenant. And then we also define the domain. And here I'm setting it up as a subdomain. Coffeeshop.localhost. Then we could make it primary. For this we just press enter. So this is more relevant if our main application is a tenant as well to give it special functionalities. All right, and with that, we created our first tenant. Now let's also create a separate admin for the tenants database. So for the coffee shop schema. And I create a super user with python manage to py create underscore tenant underscore super user. 
then we enter to which tenant schema or the question mark to list all available schemas. As we can see, we only have the coffee shop schema for now. Then we add the username. I choose admin2. Email and password. All right, with that, we also have created now a super user for this database schema. Now let's check it out in a browser. Let's start up the server again. Then here I'm navigating now to the coffee shop subdomain. And here we have now a new copy of our main application. As we can see, our items list is still empty. So let's add a few items. Macchiato. Cappuccino. And Americano. My mom's favorite. Okay, let's also check out the admin interface. Slash admin. Here the admin username is admin2. And this is the admin interface for a tenant. As we can see, tenant specific tables are displayed in a green color. If we inspect the users, we have only admin2 here as a user. And in the items, only our three coffee types. Nice. Now let's change the title of this website. I want to display here the name of the tenant. So, coffee shop. We can do this easily in the template. So I'm going to my header.html file, which is in the templates, includes, header.html. And here I add now an if-else statement. So if we have a tenant, if request.tenant is true, I display the tenant's name. Else I display Django tenants as the title and close it with end if. Okay, save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page and as we can see, the name of the tenant is now displayed here. Now let's register this tenants table in the admin interface. However, because the tenant manager app is a shared app, the tenants table would appear in the admin interface of every tenant and that is maybe something we don't want to happen. One option to avoid this is to create a completely separate admin interface specifically for managing tenants and granting access to this admin only to the main application. We can achieve this by configuring separate URLs for the public app. But first, let's create this custom admin interface. So for this, I'm going to the admin.py file in my tenant manager app. And here I'm creating a new tenant admin site class. This will be a new admin interface, but will inherit the functionality from the default admin site. You can grab this code from my GitHub repository. And we register here the new tenant table and the domain table. Okay, let's import tenant and domain. So from dot models import everything. And then we initialize this class and give it the name tenant admin site. Naming this admin is required to distinguish it from other admin sites. Okay, save this file. And now I create a path to this admin, which is only accessible from my main application. So I'm going to my core folder. And here I'm making a duplicate now from the main urls.py file. Copy and paste. And then renaming the new file to urls underscore public.py. In here, we have all the links my main application has access to. 
And here I'm including now this tenant admin side .urls patterns. Let's import these patterns from the admin.py file. From tenant manager.admin, import tenant admin site. Okay, save this file. And now we tell Django to use this URL file when we're using the public schema. So we go into the settings.py file. Here we find the root URL configuration. And underneath, I add now the public schema URL configuration, which is pointing to the URLs underscore public file. OK, save this file now. And let's check it out. So this link should not work on this coffee shop tenant site. So I go to slash admin underscore tenant. And indeed, we get a 404 page not found error. But let's test it now with the main application, so without the subdomain. Then we have access to this custom admin interface with the tenants and the domain tables. So here we would see all the tenants which were created. And here we could change the name, for example. And here we have also the domains. All right, this is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You are able now to create your own tenants. In the next video, we will see how we can customize this page further with adding a different color for the navigation bar and also update the logo. I hope to see you there. Until then, happy coding, my friends, and bye-bye for now.